I'm reading from the second chapter of Galatians, and I'm going to use as a text the ninth verse, and I don't believe I ever have to apologize for the Word of God. This is God talking. Ninth verse through, through Paul, when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. They acknowledged that Paul and Barnabas had the message of God in their life, and they received them into the fellowship. The message that I'm preaching, you that are listening by means of radio, what are you? You're the one that I am concerned with. Are you a pillar or are you a post? Are you a pillar of faith? Or are you just standing there as a post of pretension, pretending to be something that you are not? I want you to know we have been invaded from outer space. And it seems like all hell has vomited out every demon spirit it ever had. Trying to disrupt the faith of God that's in the lives of God's children. Talking to church folks now. And I believe in this chapter, and you don't hear many preachers preaching about this confrontation between two men of God. But since I'm here on a Monday night and I'm going to be setting people free, there's a lot of things that I see in this chapter that has men of God in bondage. Now, I don't mind telling you, I heard James Robinson preach from a platform the other night, and I heard that man make a confession that I honored him dearly for, and God delivered him and set him free, and that man's healing the sick and casting out devils today because he got rid of some, rid of some things that he had no business having. And he gave an altar call, and I must have seen 4,000 Christians come running down an altar to get right with God. Christians, And I've been studying this, and I've been reading this, and God has sort of dropped this into my heart for you, because I believe there are things that are hindering us from getting God's best. And I made up my mind I'm going to have it. There ain't no devil going to keep me from God's best. I've made up my mind I am going to have it. Can you shout amen, somebody? What you seem to be is not what you are. Look at the third chapter of Galatians, verse 3, and let me just sort of read this, if you will. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? They appeared to be saints, but they were living in the flesh. And there's a lot of God's people today, when you see a man of God that stands behind the pulpit, you see more of the flesh than you do of the Spirit. Now don't turn that radio off. I want you to keep it on with me today. Because I'm going to be digging up some things here that I can see that's coming forth from the character of man. It is nothing but a demonstration of flesh. If ever we needed a crucifixion, it is today. I must be crucified and Christ has to come alive. Not I, but Christ, if we are going to see the miraculous and the supernatural. Can you shout amen? Now, the functional purpose, the functional purpose of a pillar is for support. Is that right? Now, don't you turn that radio off. There's some Christians in the church that won't support anything. I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you church folks now. The functional the functional provision of a pillar is to support. And God has promised that we are going to be pillars to everyone that overcomes, but I believe He wants us to be a pillar now. A post is nothing but something to hang a, 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 a post, uh, to hang a, a, a what's it? A poster, the, these advertisements of my meeting, you know what you do with them? You put them on a post. Something to advertise on. Something to tie a horse to. It ain't nothing but a post. 
something to tie something to. But a pillar is something that gives support. And here the Apostle Paul declares that the Apostle Peter was guilty of masquerading as something that he wasn't. Are you listening to me? He was a pretender when it came to the Gentiles and the Jewish religion. And the first thing I see here is a spirit of pride that gets a hold of an individual. I know you sinners are enjoying this on radio. I'm talking to church folks. Pride. And I believe every one of us here know what pride is. This is the parent sin. Look at verse 12, if you will, and let me read it to you. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. He heard that some of the Jewish brethren were coming from James, and he withdrew himself. He didn't want them to think that he was associating with them Gentiles. Just like some church folks, we think that we are the only ones that God has made on the face of this earth. That if you don't belong to my church, you're going to go to hell. I am the bride of Christ, and if you don't belong to my church, then you ain't nothing but the bridesmaids. If you're not baptized like I am, you don't have the right thing. Are you listening to me? This is nothing but spiritual pride that has come right into the church and it's taken from the one that stands from right behind the pulpit. The destructive power of pride. Where did they get it from? It wasn't an ordinary angel that fell from heaven, but it was the angel of the highest order. He was a light bearer, Lucifer. His exclusive privilege was to illuminate the throne of God. And if you want to find out why he was kicked out of heaven, all you got to do is read Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14. He said, I will become like the Most High. I will ascend unto the Most High. I will be like the Most High. That I, 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 I has to be crucified. Hear me, preachers. There's a lot of preachers that God are using to heal the sick and even to cast out devils, and even they are subject to this spirit. Jesus gave his 70 power over diseases, how to cure the sick, and how to cast out devils, and they come back rejoicing. And they said, whoopee, even the devils are subject to us. And he said, don't rejoice, because devils are subject to you. He said, I saw Satan fall. In other words, he's telling those men that he gave power to heal the sick, that he saw that same spirit of pride that was in Lucifer that kicked him out of heaven. That same spirit of pride was in those that were healing the sick. Not only preachers, but I'm talking to you as believers. Just because you lay hands on the sick and somebody get healed doesn't give you the right to be proud. These signs shall follow every believer. Just because you know how to pray, it's not you healing the sick. Jesus is the healer. You're nothing but the prayer. He said you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Can you shout amen, somebody? And if ever we needed to be delivered from a foul spirit, it's that foul spirit of pride that prevails in the life of people that are even spirit-filled. Now, I know you don't like to hear it, but I come to preach it anyhow. We're going to get rid of that spirit. God said, whatever I loose on earth, He's going to loose in heaven. And whatever I bind on earth, He's going to bind in heaven. Tonight is liberation night for the child of God. It's your hour of victory because Jesus is in the house. Raise your hands and shout praise the Lord with me. I'm reading from Galatians 2. Second chapter of Galatians. And I've been using this ninth verse as a text. 
And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Now look at verse 13, if you will. I believe I read that before, but it'll bear repeating. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their disemulation. That word means pretension. Pretending to be something that you're not. Christians. Preachers. It seems like when we're invited to some social gathering, folks don't know who you are. We put on the other face, so to speak. woo Don't turn the radio off now. I want you to keep it on. They seem to be pillars. There's a lot of pretenders in the church. I use another word, actors. Hollywood could take a lesson from the church. Because in the church they act like saints. When the music starts, they dance like Elvis. Or I should say Michael Jackson now. He's the new one on the scene. I'm reading from the second chapter of Galatians, verse 9. Listen. When James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Now, one of the most damnable sins in all of its forms is something that I see here that many Christians are guilty of. And that is prejudice. Prejudice. Don't you turn that radio off now. I said prejudice. Religious prejudice more massacres have taken place than more than any other form of prejudice other than religious. None. None can touch it. Mr. Khomeini over in Iran has butchered literally hundreds of thousands of people in the name of religion. Christianity has massacred them. We have books to prove it. The religious wars because of prejudice. If you don't believe like I believe, kill them. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about prejudice. It says Peter segregated himself. Now it's getting quiet in here. It's another form of prejudice is segregation. Some people want an all-black revival. Some people want an all-white revival. Woo-hoo. And if you are going to get in God's revival... It says he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Are you listening to me? Peter segregated himself. He ate with those Gentiles, but when the he withdrew. Hallelujah. They'll tell you, don't go down under that tent. He's a white man preaching the gospel. 
children. But God called me. Still can't go. We can't send you. So you know what he did? He went anyway. With all six kids. With no support. And God's been providing. Jehovah Jireh. It's a man of God who believed the word. Went up into Alaska. And he's there preaching the gospel to the Eskimos. And letting them know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. He's the same today. And he'll be the same tomorrow. Can you shout praise the Lord with me somebody? Revival. Every bone in my body is crying for revival. Are you listening to me? I've been invited to South Africa to preach. I said to that pastor, I'll come on one condition. You throw that meeting open to the blacks as well as the whites. If you don't do it, I'm not going to come because God called me to preach to everybody. Are you listening to me? This is the same gospel that's preached in America. It's preached all over the world. God doesn't have another Bible for another nation. And it's time every one of us get rid of all this hatred that's in our heart and get the love of God like we've never had it before so that we can love everybody. I believe when you get what I'm talking about, it'll make the Methodists love the Baptists. It'll make the Lutherans love the Presbyterians. 
to make all them Pentecostal. I call them Heinz's soup. Fifty-seven varieties of Pentecost. It'll make you love one another. Can you shout amen? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. I'm not done, but everybody stand with me a minute. I want all you men to turn around and embrace another brother and just say, Brother, I love you. All you ladies, turn around and get another woman in their arms and say, Sister, I love you. That's it. Go ahead. You that are listening to the broadcast, just tell somebody you love them. There's a Filipino. Tell that Filipino you love him. Look at these black men hugging these white men. I love you, brother. If the blood of Jesus Christ wash your sins away, there is no color as far as God is concerned. There's neither male nor female. There's neither bond nor free. But we are all one because of that precious blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary 2,000 years ago. It's time to wash it away. It's time to get it under the blood so that we can be one. Can you shout amen? You may be seated, everybody. And every one of you that are listening to this broadcast, I want you to know that Jesus Christ wants to come into your life and set you free. If you're bound by any of these things that I have been preaching about, Jesus Christ will liberate you and He will set you free. Can you raise your hands and shout amen with me? Now I'm reading from the second chapter of Galatians. And this is the final one. Verse 9. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. I'm talking about pillars of faith, or posts of pretension. That foul devil that causes things to enter into our life fills our spirit with pride. Number one. And I came right down the list with pride. The second one was pretension, dissimulation, hypocrisy, hypocrisy, and prejudice. People wanting a segregated revival. But there's another one in verse 14 that really shook me up. And I believe I heard some of you go, ooh, when I read it. Paul said, but when I saw that they walked not uprightly, according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Think about it. You know what I call this? Walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. Somebody says, I'm living according to the bylaws of my church. You can go to hell doing that. I didn't come to sugarcoat it. I come to put it out there where it is. I didn't write this book. I heard Brother Clendenin say that this morning. Don't get mad at me. God wrote this thing. I didn't. They didn't walk uprightly. We are judged by this book. And we must walk according to the concepts of this book. Can you shout amen? And I believe it behooves every one of us If we are going to live like somebody, let's use Jesus as our example. To be like Jesus. All I ask is to be like Him. Now, I've got to get in the last three here. Verse 12. Go back to verse 12 with me again. He withdrew and separated Himself. Why? Here it is. Fearing them. Which were of the un, which were of the of the circumcision, fear, fear gripped his heart. The man that healed a whole city with his shadow, he had a fear of the people. 
There's some of you people within the sound of my voice, not only under this tent, but I mean by radio, that have a fear of people. You are governed by people to please people. If ever we needed to be liberated, it is today. We need to be set free from people and have no fear of what man can do. Can you shout amen? You say, well, I'm no adulterer. I'm no murderer. I didn't take somebody's life. You're just as guilty of sin if you're bound by fear. This is what Paul's talking about. Fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, of sound mind. We have no right to be afraid of anything. You know, there was a time I was afraid to lay hands on the sick. I believe there's a lot of pastors the same way. I used to pastor a church. The devil would say to me when they would bring him in in stretchers, he said, take him in the back room. Just in case they don't get up. See what I'm getting at? Well, I at least had sense enough to know then. I said, listen, devil, I ain't no healer no how. All God told me to do was lay hands on him and he'd raise him up. And I talked back to him and I said, Devil, what are you going to do when they get up? Because God promised me you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And I have no fear of laying hands on anybody that's diseased or afflicted. I went in the hospital to pray for a young woman with tuberculosis. She was isolated. No one was allowed in unless you put a mask on and wore the green gown. You pastors have been there before. They didn't want me to go in. I said, I'm going in. They said, you got to wear a mask. I said, what for? So the germ don't jump on you. I said, I'm immunized. That devil can't jump on me. The doctor said, I can't be responsible for you. I said, I'm so glad you're not. Somebody else is responsible for me. Jesus told me to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And I marched in there in the name of Jesus and laid hands on her. And the power of God came on her. And today she is healthy, healed from tuberculosis. You should have no fear of what the devil can do for you. Can you shout amen? Perfect love casteth out fear. I don't have but three minutes left. Listen. Not only was Peter messing up, and not only do we mess up when we allow these things to come into our life, but we cast a stumbling block in our brother's path as well. Because of the dissimulation and because of the pretension, in verse 13 it said, Even Barnabas was carried away with their dissimulation. Think about it. I mean, this is the big fisherman. This is Peter. And because of his dissimulation, Barnabas was carried away with it also. God wants to make us a pillar. Not only now, but in the ages to come. Jesus said to John on the Isle of Patmos in Revelation 3 and 12, to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, write to him that overcometh. To him that overcometh, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. And I made up my mind I'm sick of being a post. I don't want them just to pin announcements on me. I want to support something. I want to stand for something. Can you shout amen? I want the devil's crowd to know that I'm a man of God. That I not only preach the gospel, but I live this gospel. Can you shout amen, somebody? Paul said, be an example of the believers. If you're going to let somebody know, not only preach it, but live it. And let the world know that you are a child of God. Can you shout amen with me? Oh, hallelujah. Stand with me, everybody.
Can you shout amen with me? Oh, hallelujah. 